Hello my friends, today we will be talking about Topaz Sharpen AI. I have this set of uh, hummingbird pictures that I took a few years ago and they are all really really sharp if you look close up. I'm gonna go uh, to 100% and every single one it's so sharp. I have no problem with them except this one which I like the most. This one when you go to 100% you see the eye is just a little bit of motion blur. And that is because I shot this image uh, a few years back when I was shooting Nikon. As you can see here, I shot it with the D850. I used the 500 millimeter PF lens op wide open at 5.6, but my shutter speed was just one over 800 of a second. And uh, I got this little bit of motion blur and I need to fix that because I really like this image. And uh, I think Topaz Sharpen AI can help me do that. So this image, I already did my basic edits on it. Now I just need to send it into Photoshop so I can do my Sharpen AI on it. Command E to send it into Photoshop as a copy. And there we are into Photoshop. And now I do like to make a copy of my background. Command J to duplicate it. And uh, let's see, I will go to Filter. I will go to Topaz Labs and Sharpen AI. And I really hope this program can save my photo because this was my favorite photo out of that session. If you worked with uh, Sharpen AI before, then you know it is not the fastest program. I used to not like using it at all actually because it used to give me some horrible artifacts. But uh, over the last year or so, it made a lot of improvements and I think now it's totally worth it and it could really save your images. I have this navigator, you see on the right side where my mouse is. I have this little window, this is the navigator, and I can move the little window rectangle wherever what I wanted to show in my image. And since it's the eye I want to sharpen, I want to make sure I put this box right over the eye. Now, just as the noise, it has these four windows that you can see and compare different uh, ways of sharpening. But when we look at the models, we have a lot more than four. I believe there is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have ten modes over here. And we only have four windows. So right now we are seeing the motion blur normal, motion blur normal. So we have two times the motion blur normal, out of focus normal, and two soft normal. Well, I do know that my image, it's a motion blur because my shutter speed was too low. So I think I want to see more of these motion blur uh, modules. So I have the motion blur normal. So I will click on this one and this one I will put it on motion blur, very noisy. So when I click on this, it will replace whatever was in this window. And out of focus normal, I will click it and I will go to motion blur, very blurry. So now that will be replaced as well. Let's look through all the toggles into this window. We have here where it says original. If I click on it, I will see my original. When I let go, I will see my processed image. To get you a better view of that, I'm gonna go into single view. And we have the motion blur very blurry chosen here. You can click on every any one of them and choose whichever model you would like to see. It's updating. Every time you make a change, click on anything, it will do an update and it takes a few seconds. Like I said, it's not the fastest program. So I'm gonna let it do its thing. And now it's updated. And as you can see, it really did sharpen the, the image. The eye doesn't look blurry anymore. So now if I click on this original, I can see my original, the blurry one. And when I let go, it's the updated sharpen. So before and after. The same thing, I don't have to go to this button, I can just click on the image and see before and after. Before and after. Then we have the split view, which is my favorite. When you click on it, then you can just drag this bar and this is on the left side, you have the before, on the right side, you have the after. Before and after. You see the beautiful job I did, before and after. Then you have the side by side where you can just see the before on the left and after on the right. And then you go back to the comparison view if you want to see more than, you know, one model at a time. As I said, this is your models and you can pick from those. I'm going to go in the single view. I'm going to work with this today. So we know what this button does and we know all the views. Then you have the zoom. 
For the zoom, you have the zoom to fit. That will fit it into screen, the whole image. Then we have zoom 50%, 100, 200, 400. If you want anything in between, you can use the slider and just custom zoom to whatever you need. I'm going to go in 100% this time. I usually like to see my images at 100% when I check for sharpness or noise or anything else. Let's move over here. We have our models and you can open and close the window and then you can choose whichever model you want. If you want, if you have the time, I think the best way to operate this is to really go through every one of them. So click on one, wait to update, click on the next one, wait, wait to update. And then when you see the ones that you think did the best job, then you can put them into comparison view and see them next to each other so you can really choose which one worked the best for your image. So then we have the model parameters and this is, you can, right now it's set on auto, so it automatically remove the blur and suppress noise automatically. If I turn this off, then I can just manually adjust how much blur I need to remove and how much noise I need to remove. If you turn it on, then automatically it will choose the parameters for it. The same thing with the modes. If you do not have the time to look through every one of these modes and see which one works for best for your image, then you can just click this icon over here and it will automatically analyze your image and tell you which one is the best one for your image. So for this particular image, it shows out of focus normal and remove blur at 33, suppress noise at 63. Now I'm going to wait to see when it updates, if I'm happy with the results. If not, I will go back and choose a different one. Sometimes it makes a really good decisions, but I find sometimes it is pretty wrong and you have to go and choose whichever mode you think works the best. Great. This is our updated image. And when I look close up at the eye, it's still not very sharp. So I really don't like that it shows the out of focus normal. I'm going to ch change it and I think motion blur, either normal or very blurry would work. I'm going to go with normal, see how that one looks like and it automatically looks better. If I go very noisy, let's see, that one is to update now. And this is the updated version of motion blur, very noisy. Let's see the before and after, before and after. It works really, really well. And if I go to motion blur, very blurry, that one works maybe even a little bit better. Let's see. That one or very blurry. I will stay with motion blur, very blurry. And I like the results of that one. This is the before and after. Before and after. Let's go down into this menu here on the right. And the next uh, thing we have is select. This is where your masking is happening. So right now it's on, on, that means it's automatically creating a mask. If I click on select, I will see my mask is doing an auto subject selection. Let's see if it finds my subject. And there you go. It perfectly found the hummingbird. It also selected a little bit of this branch. And it doesn't just have auto subject selection. It has people, portraits, skyline, landscapes, or you can do a custom mask, which we will do on this um photo because I do not want to sharpen the whole bird. I really just want to sharpen the eye. When you're sharpening an image, you really don't want to apply to the whole image because it will sharpen your noise. That means will add noise. And I just don't want it to look everything too digital, too sharpened. I just really want to focus on that eye where I missed focus. So because I don't want to keep my sharpening the whole bird, I'm going to go to custom. And now I am going to go to refine. Once I click on refine, we are getting this dialog where I can choose a brush. Right now, the whole image is selected. So that means the sharpening, it's applying everywhere. We have this red overlay, but I can go to clear mask. And now I can just add with my brush. We have the size of the brush over here. We have the softness of the brush, how feathered it is. And then we have the opacity. So I want to paint, I want to add with 100% soft brush. And I just want to paint, I have to make my brush smaller. I just really want to paint on the eye because that's really the only thing I want to sharpen. And there you go. 
You also have edge aware. If you have some tricky masking you need to do, this will help you a lot and will kind of find the edges and helps you make a better selection. Now this is your, um, you can invert the mask or you can clear it. We saw we already cleared the mask in order to make this custom mask just for the eye. And then the overlay, this is where you have your color overlay. Right now it's set to red and it's set to always show overlay. I like to see my mask. I can, you know, turn it off if you don't want to see it or turn it on. Also, if you do not uh, like the color, for example, let's say you're working on an image that it has a red flower and you want to change the color of your overlay, then you click on this color block over here and you can choose any of these colors on the color wheel. And then the overlay opacity, if you put it at 100%, it will be 100% opaque. This is just the masking, not the sharpening. So do not confuse it, it's just the red overlay. And when it's 100%, you really don't see what is underneath it and you don't wanna work like that. You wanna have it somewhere around 50% so you can see what's underneath your mask and, you know, help you make a better selection. Once I'm happy with the mask, I can click update. And now this is my updated mask. And I am happy with my sharpening. I am happy with my mask. And now I can just click apply. This is another shortcut for your mask, this button over here. This is your mask. You can just click on it. Instead of clicking on select, you can click on this mask and then it will just open your masking dialog as we did from select. So now we click apply. Now it's important to know I'm not sponsored by Topaz. This is just programs that I love using. I do not have uh, affiliate links with them. They're just great, great programs that you can use. I use Topaz denoise and sharpen AI all the time now. And uh, they also have Topaz Gigapixel and Topaz, uh, let's see, what was it? Gigapixel and Mask AI. And those two, they are not the greatest thing. Gigapixel works if you really know how to work the program, you can get around it without getting much artifacts. But Topaz Mask, it works all right. It's just really not necessary because there's so many other programs out there that does a better masking than Topaz Mask AI. So we still have another 40 seconds to go on processing this image. I'll probably cut out this part so you don't have to wait here for 40 extra seconds. And now here we are in Photoshop with our update image. Let's see if I go to zoom 100%, to zoom at 100% in Photoshop, hold down Z, this dialog will pop out and then you can click on the 100. I'm gonna go over here so I can see the bird very clearly. And then when I disable this layer, this is our before. You see the blurry eye and this is after. Before and after. And now all it's left for me is to flatten my image and then save it and send it back into Lightroom. I hope you learned something new and this was useful. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I will see you in my next video.